Okay, when you guys think of London, what comes to mind? Teen crumpets. And the Queen. How about you, Aaron? Giant red buses. Yes, giant double-decker buses that come barreling towards you on the wrong side of the road. Yes, and also bridges. Yes, that's true too. But T, you had something there, Aiden. If you said T, which you did, then you're going to want to join us today for our podcast because we're going to be taking a tour of three famous tea stores in London. And we're going to try some tea right here in the studio too. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Also, we were in London on the hottest day ever. Like it was 106 degrees here. So we're going to tell you how that went. We're going to regale you with tales of suffering in London. Plus your comments. You had a lot to say about uh, last week's question. This is the Elliot Confidential Podcast. I'm Christopher Elliott. I'm here with Aaron and and Elliot. How are you guys doing this week? Doing pretty good. I'm good. Okay, good. I'm doing good too. Awesome. Mostly. <laughs> ha 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 ha. Before we get into it, here's this week's question. Since we're talking about tea today, I'd love to know what your favorite drink was when you were traveling. Whether you were having high tea at the Ritz in London, or whether you are kicking back and having a microbrew at the Thirsty Squirrel in Solitude, Utah, I want to hear your story. So please, scroll down and leave a comment. So let's start with a walk. We are located in central London, right across from London Bridge Station, and we walked across the street to Borough Market to a store called Bird and Blend. And Aaron, what did we find there? Well, it's like any other tea store. It's a bit of a box and it has large canisters of tea and they'll let you smell them. Even they have, they've got these little fans, sort of Chinese fans. So they take the tea and they put it on a little lid and then they blow it at you and it smells great. That was very interesting. I saw that once in Paris where they open the tea and then they fan you so that you can smell the tea. Very, very interesting. Very, very kind of weird the first time I saw it. But yeah. I mean, I guess it works. It does. It does. Mm-hmm. We definitely smelled some tea. I liked it. it was, there was a festive atmosphere. I think everyone likes tea here. Yeah. So uh, they were playing kind of happy music and people were talking about tea. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We decided that we were going to select one type of tea to test right here in the studio right now. And that tea is going to be peppermint tea because... It's something that everyone does, and a lot of people like peppermint tea, including us. So let's try some of the peppermint tea from Bird and Blend. All right. This one is called Cold Weather Warrior, so it's not a pure peppermint or mint blend. It has, let me look at the ingredients. It has eucalyptus leaves, anise seed, lemongrass, chili, echinacea, and peppermint. Mm, Sounds good. All right. Let me give it a, a swig. A swig of whiskey. Yeah, you know, I had this before. It's very good. But I think that last time I had it, maybe it was a bit stronger. Cause we'll give us a taste. We'll leave it in a little longer next time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Because this what one... Think, it's very strong. Mm. Very strong, very, very minty. Minty ah, mint. Very minty. Yeah, you can imagine having this on, like a, on a cold day here in London. Yeah. And it's a very minty minty. <clears throat> Whoa, yeah, it's very minty. We also went down to the Borough Market and we got fresh mint. That's yeah. like the, the baseline, I think, is that, you know... There's no, nothing beats fresh mint. So we, yeah. we brewed some up here, uh, Aaron. Uh, Surprisingly, fresh mint tea is definitely more flavorful than dried mint tea, even though technically with dried mint, you get more mint, you know? I think the reason we chose mint is it has no caffeine in it. It has a lot of flavor. And, you know, if we were doing this with caffeinated tea, I would be climbing the walls Well, uh, one, of these teas, <laughs> one of these teas is still a black tea. Um, really? Which one? Yeah. No, that's they're, not they're, true. No, they're all... The uh, middle one, you guys said that was a black tea. It's no, not no, a black tea. No. No. Oh, black tea maker, okay. You're getting ahead of ourselves, though. <laughs> yeah. I thought okay, I was just yeah, like, oh. Is, uh, what do you think, Aiden? Uh, that one is uh, a little bit more bitter, I would say. Yeah. I think that comes from other types it's of... the mint. active ingredients. Yeah, well, the Menthol. when you just have regular mint tea, it's not very bitter at all. But I think, you know, when you add other types like peppermint or a winter green, like adds a little bit of bitterness. We walked across the bridge, across London Bridge, to um, our next tea store, which is uh, right across from the Court of Justice. It's Twinings. Twinings. Twinings, yes. Twinings. It was surprisingly small. This is their flagship store, surprisingly small, with teas that you don't find anywhere else. Like There are teas that I did not recognize there. And we found this cute little box 
Kind of like a green box with mint tea here in it. Yeah, it's like a, it's not specifically green. It's maybe more of a green blue. I forget green, whatever it is. Greenish. And is this the one here? Let's try yeah, this. Yeah, okay, it's called right, Medley of Mint. You want to start on this one? Yeah, sure, I'll give this is Twinings. Twinings. Yes. Twinings of London. Yes, but it's a tin box and it's, uh, it's nice. Yeah, they do the presentations really well. Mm. What do you think? Oh, that's smooth. Nice. Yes, yeah, smooth. I'll try some. Oh, yeah, it's a much more mellow kind of a blend of, of you know, let's have a look at the box here. Yeah, I like it. Large leaf, loose infusion. I am not by any means a tea aficionado, but today you are. To, yeah, I like this, uh, this yeah. paint. And, you know, and I thought that they were going to be really stuffy there because, you know, it's twinings. But they were very nice, very accessible, and they helped us find the teas that we were looking for. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Twinings has quite the selection. I mean, they have, they have some teas that I guess you really can't get anywhere else. I mean, one of them I saw was this, it was this Pu'ar tea. Pu'ar tea, if you don't know, is basically black tea. It's, it's not black tea, actually. It's, it's tea fermented. that's been fully fermented. Yeah, right. And it smells like cat food. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we tried that. It was, a, it was a fascinating experience. And the reason why basically is because I've never seen it before, but the way that they store Pu'ar tea is in, is in these little like robes. It's like a, how can I say? It's like a chiclet. It's like wrapped in cloth. It's, it's yeah. very strange. Yeah, it's like uh, those, those bath soaps that you buy. It's kind of like all packed in there. Yeah. Now the next place was a madhouse. Oh yeah, that one, I've, that was, oh man, I had the maps page open, but it was in a place, it was um, Covent Garden. Right. That's what it was, Covent Garden. Right. So I was in Covent Garden, and they have a, like a shopping mall there. It's a high, it's a high-end, you know, shopping experience there. And they had quite the place. It was a two-story tea house, and you on the top they have like tea sweetenings, um, mainly tea sweetenings. They also have coffee, and at the bottom they just have so many different types of tea. Right. So the tea that we got here is peppermint and licorice. Yeah. And you, you can oh, take the licorice. I'm not a fan <laughs> of licorice. Like the, you don't like the licorice? No, it, I don't like the licorice. super sweet. Yeah. I'm going to go back to the, the mint, the regular mint. Oh, Aiden likes the twinings. Yeah, you know, I'm not a... Honestly, I don't really taste much licorice. Um, if anything, licorice a lot of these teas are really subtle. So in the yeah. beginning, you think, oh, this is just normal water. But no, it's, uh, it's mint tea. But I think that the tea that had the strongest flavor definitely was the twinings. Yeah, if I had to choose any of these, I would choose the Twinings for the dry tea, but my strong preference is the fresh mint. Yeah. I think fresh mint is, you can't beat that. Yeah. So good. Yeah. And the way that you make fresh mint is you just go grab some mint, you, you know, you, you cut it from the garden and then you put it in hot water and voila, there yeah. you are. I mean, the best tea, best mint tea that you can get is fresh mint tea, especially yes. if you get fresh peppermint. I mean, that's one thing that I have not found yet, fresh peppermint. Let's talk about the heat a little bit, because we were here during the um, mother of all heat waves, which happened earlier in the week, and it got to be 106 degrees in London, which is a new record. It's an all-time record. All-time. Um, what was that like, guys? Well, well, it was like Houston in the summer. <laughs> you know, not much different. That's Except average, that you don't have an AC. No that's, AC. That, that's an average Houston day right there. And actually, I was on the internet and I found out that actually uh, some people in the United Kingdom were actually happy about it. Because they're like, oh, finally, a warm day in the United Kingdom. Yeah, it was a really warm day. We'd had no uh, air conditioning in our small apartment. And yeah. it was really bad. We decided to go down to the Modern Art Museum and hang out with everyone else there. Yeah. Uh, if people, you want to talk about downsides, the worst part is trying to sleep with no air conditioning yeah, oh. when it's that hot. Yeah, I, I remember. I slept very well. I did not sleep well. No, it's the buildings here are they're made to retain heat. So uh, once the heat gets in, it doesn't go out. It's not like you can open a window yep. and, and get a nice cross breeze. No AC. So. No AC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The fascinating thing about that is that the next day there were there were headlines about how. Most of Britain hadn't slept because of the scorching heat. There were zombies. Yeah. Oh, I will post some of those headlines so that you can see them because they're hilarious. There's one where the people are all look, they look like zombies, heat zombies. Hmm. 
Let's do your reader comments. Last week we asked about the hotel that you felt the most at home with, or most at home in, and we had a lot of people write in with their comments. Karen says, hands down, we were the most comfortable at the Empress in Victoria, BC. This was before the takeover by the Fairmont. They were there during the Christmas week um, and they stayed on the concierge floor. She says they had a lounge with a Christmas tree, gifts for us on Christmas morning, a stocked bar with non-alcoholic drinks 24 seven, along with heavy appetizers in the afternoon. Uh, our own concierge who did everything for us from turn down service to finding me a high quality knee brace. Best week ever in a hotel. Hey, we've stayed, I think we've stayed at this uh, property before, um, after the takeover by Fairmont. Nice place, really nice place. Christine says she liked the Glenwood Hotel in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. I think I've stayed there too. It had high ceilings and large rooms in an old style, in an old hotel style. She says it wasn't expensive, but it was very clean and close to the hot springs. Teddy Roosevelt room was spectacular. It was like going back in time. Harry cast a vote for the Hotel Monte Mulini in Roving, Croatia. Beautiful luxury hotel situated on beachfront property, he says. The staff is wonderful and goes out of its way to personalize service. The concierge staff was extremely helpful and assisted us in individualizing our visit uh, on and outside the property. Uh, we also used a term last week, global nomad, that prompted one of our readers, Michael, to ask, he said, I'm curious about the term global nomad versus digital nomad versus expat. Love to hear your thoughts. Do you guys have any thoughts on the difference between a global nomad, a digital nomad, and an expat? Wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, when, I, when I read the question, I said, they're all the same. But actually, a global nomad is not the same as a digital nomad because digital nomads are like doing something. They're working online, right? Yeah. I think that the big difference is a global nomad is someone, and I'll make this very specific, a global nomad is someone that travels everywhere, not, and it's not particular to one country. It's global, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All right, a digital nomad is someone who travels around. It doesn't matter if it's global, but mainly he's able to work online. He or she is able to work online. Yeah, right. right They're exactly. able to work online. And an expat is just someone who's outside their native country. Yes, someone who's outside of their, na na uh, their native country. So an if you're an expat, yeah. if you're an expat, like if you're an American, if you're an expat, you don't go back to America, right? Right, you, you stay. You right. stay. You don't have to be in a lot of different countries. But you can like just stay in one country. You can say, so, I mean, we've seen expats, you know, people who go to Britain from the United, uh, go to Britain from the United States, for example, and those are expats, even though they technically live here. Yeah, so. right. You don't have to travel a lot. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So they're all different words. They mean different things, but that's the difference. I didn't. It, for those of us who are listening and who say, hey, I think I want to go to the UK. Maybe not on a hot day like they had last week, but. What kind of advice would you give them? Advice? Yeah. Well, I would walk around the city a little. It's a very nice walking city. It's a great walking city, yeah. Um, and mass style. transit here is pretty good, but you're better off walking, really. Yeah, they're both good, but walking is just fine. It's a very good walking city because it's so close to each other. And uh, also make sure you go across the London Bridge because most people just stay in London. If you go across the London Bridge, that's where you'll really see the skyline of the city. And... Uh, also enjoy all, all the architecture. And also when you get food, try to keep the restaurant meals to a minimum because it's just it's so gosh so expensive. darn expensive. And then are finally- gonna, Are you gonna take your own advice? Uh, I am I am currently taking my own advice. Uh, okay. Because I get you to pay for it. Uh, okay. uh, but, uh, and then the last but not least, stay off the bike paths unless you want to get yelled at. Oh my goodness. Look, look, yes. look, look, look. If you think, if you think a place like uh, I don't know, New York is bad with really rude uh, bikers. Just wait until you get here. I mean, you've already gotten yelled at twice. I have, yes. And I then mean. they're, but they they yell very loudly, but they're still very prim and proper. They're like, get off the bike path. The bike path is the rightful area of the bike owner and the bike rider. That's what they sound like when they yell at you. Yeah, I got, I'm done getting yelled at that's I know. Fun. No fun. yeah the, when you have them with you there was like a tree in, in the path of the sidewalk so you had to walk around it. it wasn't even that long yeah 
They're very territorial about their. They're very. I think. Here, yes. I think it comes from like their their self conscious about how like small the the bike paths are because the the bike paths are smaller than the sidewalks and are not quite as many bike paths as sidewalks. You know, it's. I don't know. It could be anything, but. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Aaron, any advice for people visiting the UK or wanting to visit the UK? Well, actually, I wanted to riff off of what Aiden said. Definitely, yeah, you want to keep your restaurant meals to a minimum, but I'd say this one thing. My mind has changed about food here in the UK. If you get some very specific things, you can find uh, that the quality is just much better. Like, for example, pizza. We've gotten so, so much good pizza here. We thought that in France we would get great pizza. Probably if we went to Italy, better pizza or whatever, but no. Best pizza so far, right here in the jolly old UK. Really? Yes. Because I, I like the pizza that we got in France a lot. I, I liked it too a lot, but the pizza here, it's, um, it, it's knocking on France's door. I would say in some cases it's even better. Hmm, um, interesting, okay. But the other thing I would say, here in London particularly, uh, there's a lot of Amazon Fresh, right? Amazon Fresh, if you don't know, is that new, uh, it's that new cashierless shopping experience where you can go and buy things. If you want to save a couple pence here in the UK, go to Amazon Fresh. A lot of their stuff is subsidized. So for example, we live right next to an M&S. M&S is like a grocery store here. A lot of the grocery stores are sort of grab and goes. Is, that's the sort yeah, of deal. They don't like cashiers here, so you'll, you'll find a lot of them have automated uh, exactly. systems. Exactly. But uh, Amazon Fresh takes it to a whole new level because yes. you walk in there and you, you get onto your Amazon app and then you go shopping and you walk out. And there's, oh, yeah, yeah. There's nothing that's scanned or anything. Yeah, like I need you to be specific. That's, that's how cashierless it is. Like there yeah. literally is none. But I and wonder, it's very cheap too. It's oh yes, Amazon like a, Fresh is in, they are totally insanely inexpensive. It. Oh yeah. yeah, like it's probably twice to three times less expensive than uh, an M&S or Tesco or anything like that. And it has better food. Yeah, but even then, M&S and Tesco actually have pretty good prices. Well, even, well, it's... Better than the restaurants, for sure. I, yeah. I know, I know. Really, the second you step out of the restaurant and go into the grocery store, not only do you get really good options, but really good prices, even if it's not just Amazon Fresh. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of bummed because uh, I, I missed the Farnsworth Air Show that happened here this week. I, I didn't even realize that it, that it was going on, and I'm supposed to be a little bit of an aviation geek. But we had so many other things going on, and then there was the heat wave. The last thing I want to do is stand out there and watch planes fly all over in the heat. So maybe it's for the better. But I'm, I'm enjoying the UK too. And I, I think that as, you know, when you figure out where the inexpensive food is, then you're in a good place. Like the borough market, for example, if you go there on Saturday or Sunday or Wednesday, everyone is there and they have all their stalls set up and you can find the gooseberries are amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, gooseberries. Oh, That's gooseberries. A, gooseberries, you haven't had them yet. Gooseberries I are a great all. find here in the UK. They mm. grow here in the UK. They are really they, good. They taste like grapes, mm. but better, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's it's the like thing. they're really tart, but a little bit sweet. It's like those Peruvian uh, white table grapes that you used to get in the United Wait, States. Oh, those are so good, yeah. But they're better, you know? They're like grapes. They're like, I don't know, it's a, it's a berry, obviously. Yeah. And you can get them and they're, they're amazing. Definitely try them while you're here in the UK. Well, we could just keep talking, but let me repeat this week's question, which is, what is the best drink that you've ever had in your travels? I would love to hear about the best beer, wine, Kool-Aid, whatever it was that Kool you- Kool-Aid? Kool-Aid. That's branded. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you're gonna get sued. Uh, Non-alcoholic cocktail beverage um, thing milkshake whatever it is let's hear about it and to also don't forget to tell us where you had it so that we can all go and get it oh yeah i can already say what i think my favorite was right, we, we just had it when we were walking back here it's gazoz if you're in turkey and everywhere else it's gazoza but you know it's the, a light effervescent it's light it's, it's light it's effervescent it is okay. delectable it is sugary it is like sweet a minerally type so it's it is the flavor of minerals yes well, all it is is it, it's heavily mineralized water that is then carbonated and then they just add a dump truck full of sugar onto it it is absolutely disgustingly delicious <laughs> it's disgusting no 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 i no, had no. one too it's good and it's and i'm sugared very up right sweet now. it's yeah. very sweet but it is delicious though I'm glad there's no caffeine in this tea, guys, because I, I think that I would be 
staying up all night. If actually, I'm... you know what? I was kind of falling asleep at the beginning of this, I, and I, I feel very invigorated now. I actually do think that that was black tea there. No. Sorry about that, Dad. Uh -oh. You're going to have a good night tonight. Well, I'm glad you joined us for this uh, tea drinking uh, adventure that we had. And uh, don't forget to leave a comment. We will do your comments next week again. Yep. Uh, and uh, hopefully the heat will, wherever you are, I hope the heat isn't as bad as it is here. Yeah, and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for my father, oh, Christopher well, Elliott, yes. on we, YouTube. We, We're making videos for him weekly. We've been making weekly. a lot of videos, yes. Lots of, lots of good Thanks videos. Thanks for the plug. If you want to watch a really entertaining video, Go watch the one where he went into a cave in Turkey or watch the one where we did a, a drink tasting around a, a resort in Turkey. And that was fun. Those were all really fun videos. And if you're interested in learning a little bit about all the advocacy stuff on Elliot.org uh, a, a little bit more with some videos, we got also a lot of explanatory videos on that you would love because yeah. we edit it to hell. We make sure it's entertaining. We are having a lot of fun making those. Yes. Maybe too much fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, a little too much fun. I like the one where we blow up the oven. That that, was, yeah, that was my favorite. That, you know what? That one has the most views. It does. Uh, the average like count for the videos is about 20, 30. And I, I'm sure in, in a couple of years, we're going to look uh, listen back on this. We're like, whoa, we got average 20, 30 likes. Whoa, that's <laughs> like ch chump. Uh, uh, no, we're doing we're doing good. Yeah, I mean, chump uh, we're just getting started, but but, but I think that the having fun is the most important thing, and we are definitely having fun doing this. You know what the funny part about that video was, though the 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 blowing up the oven video. It has the most views, but it only has two likes. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Well, maybe I should go like my I don't own video. I don't think they liked it that much. <sighs> All right. Whoever well, watched it, maybe. We to be continued, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us, Aaron and Iden, and uh, we will see all of you next week again. Yep. See you. All right. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.